This week we're trying out three different ways to shoot time lapses. So let's start with some core ideas that can apply to all time lapses. Firstly, the camera needs to be very stable. A tripod is pretty much essential. We can use sandbags if that's not enough, but I tend to have problems with the locations themselves, like this one. Whenever someone jogged past me, the whole bridge I was standing on literally shook, which translated into the images. Same thing with this one. My floorboards were a bit loose, so stepping on them would just slightly move the camera. So even if we have a heavy duty tripod, we need to find a rock solid place to put it and make sure we don't touch it. For exposure, we're better off staying in manual mode, as usual. But the difference is that we have to try and anticipate lighting changes. This can be a real problem when the weather keeps switching from cloudy to sunny, so sometimes we just have to come back on another day when the lighting is more consistent. I personally like to include sound wherever I can. I just think visuals feel so empty without sound. So I like to bring an audio recorder to capture the sound of the entire time lapse and we'll be using that later. Now things like sunrises, sunsets and clouds all lend themselves to time lapses because they move so slowly. Planning for these kind of shots I used Google Earth so I could see the exact path of the sun and work out what time it would set. But what do time lapses actually mean? Let's look at Breaking Bad, which is a fairly rare example of narrative fiction that uses time lapses. On a basic level, I think we could all agree that they show the audience that time is passing, whether it's transitioning to the next day or going on a long drive. I tried something similar with this shot, which we could use for a film about maybe an Olympic cyclist. This is just one of the many ways that we could communicate a character's dedication to their cycling as they work from day to night. I think the frantic movement in shots like these certainly lend themselves to characters who are panicking or in a rush. But of course we could go deeper saying that the time lapses in Breaking Bad reflect how the character changes so much in quite a short space of time. Changing from day to night so quickly reflects the character changing from a regular citizen into a criminal so quickly. But enough with the analysis. How do we actually shoot time lapses? Well, the easiest way is to just shoot a long video and speed it up in post. It really couldn't be much simpler, which is why these kind of time lapses are all over YouTube at the moment. But there are better ways of shooting them. Instead, we could film at a lower frame rate, like one frame per second. In that case, it would play back 24 times faster than real life, and the file would be 24 times smaller than if we'd been recording the entire time. But the main benefit of shooting this way is that we can use longer shutter speeds if we want to, which gives this effect, where things are blurry as if they're actually moving quickly. I much prefer this look to the choppiness of a fast shutter speed, but it's up to you. Do bear in mind that if we are using those slower shutter speeds, then we'll probably need an ND filter because there'll be so much light that this can bring it back down again to a normal level. Aside from that, all we need is a tripod and a camera that can shoot lower frame rates. I've installed Magic Lantern on my T3i so I can go as low as 0.15 frames per second, which will record one frame every about seven seconds. However, taking a sequence of individual photos is the classic way to record a time lapse and my personal favorite. For some reason, most cameras don't have a time lapse feature built in. So Syrup, who have sponsored this episode, have sent me their Genie Mini so I can control how often it takes pictures using my phone. It also allows you to pan left or right during the time lapse. You choose a start and finish point and then over half an hour or whatever you've chosen, it will slowly move from the start to the finish. You can even tilt a tripod head forwards and then mount it sideways with an L bracket so that you can tilt up or down during the shot as I did for this one. So what about once we've finished recording? Let's look at post-production. Now, if we used the first method, then we'll have some giant video files that we can speed up. And in the description, I'll write out how you do this on different editing software. But if we recorded at a lower frame rate, then we don't need to do any post-production at all. Just drop it in and it works. Now, if we used the classic method, 
then we'll have a ton of high res images that we can drop into our software and change the duration of them to one frame each. Again, I'll put the step-by-step -step process in the description. So I have to say, time lapses are pretty fun to shoot. Going out on my bike with a backpack and a little travel tripod, just looking for good spots. Then you have at least half an hour of just waiting around, which is quite nice actually. People often come over and ask what you're doing. You can have a little chat while you wait. Plus, it's a great opportunity to take some photos for Instagram. But probably the coolest thing about shooting time lapses is that you never really know what it's gonna look like until the very end. My name's Simon Cade, this has been DSLR Guide, and I'll see you next week. Thank you.